Monday Morning Racer host, Lee Craft. Lee, you got some special guests here in the studio. Thank you, Randy. Definitely do. Got next to me, Melanie Salemi of Pro Boost, and then Johnny Placino of Extreme Pro Stock. And they are the most recent winners in the PDRA in their respective classes there at the East Coast Nationals. Look, welcome to Between the Slicks, a drag racing talk show. And we're looking forward to diving into some questions with these two great drivers. Look, let's start out. Johnny, look, give me a rundown on qualifying today. It's been an interesting qualifying day for you. It hasn't been smooth, been a little rocky, been some changes, so clue us in. Yeah, so first round, uh, we've we really been fighting the same problem um, kind of since a lot. It kind of uh, it kind of didn't rear its head in on Saturday because the air got better. So um, we're having a little bit of trouble getting the Go car to accelerate early as, as, as well as we want to. Um, we're on a really good speed out the back, and we've been doing everything we can. Every change we make, it's really not 100% fixing it. So uh, a little bit worse air here, and it's kind of showing us uh, that issue. First round, we went 413. We, we were number three at the time, but then we shook the second round after making some changes. Um, made a big swing going into the last run. Uh, went out 408, and we're number four for that, which is okay, but we know our capabilities. We know we, we can be on the pole right now. Um, again, we got top speed, I think, and uh, we're really we're really two three hundreds behind where we should be in sixty feet. So um, we're happy to be in the show. We we have a fighting chance tomorrow. Um, got to do my job on the starting line, and uh, we'll see if we can get it uh, worked out in sixty feet. Awesome, man, Melanie. I think you had a rough qualifying day, but that last round, it looks like y'all got some bugs worked out. And where are you sitting right now in, qual in qualifying in for the show tomorrow? Um, I think tenth, but I've been. Trying to get dinner ready, so I, have no I interrupted idea. her from dinner. <laughs> um, yeah, we actually well, we missed testing yesterday, and we had made some pretty huge wholesale changes to the race car, and needed to make some runs during qualifying that uh, we needed to make yesterday, really. So um, <clears throat> my guys put it back to. The, what we knew and what we knew was going to go down the racetrack just so that we could get qualified because we did have 17 cars here and that's your worst nightmare, you know, <laughs> being the only the only guy out. So um, made a pretty decent run and I think we'll be good for tomorrow. Uh, unfortunately, we have to race one of the only other blower cars. Oh, man. Yeah, you, you've got so many. Well, you got so few blower cars, it seems now. It's, it's sad to have blower versus blower, you really want that in the finals and for it to work out that way. And, well, it looks like round one, you're going to have to have, have to deal with that. So, you mentioned to me last time that I got to talk to you that it was the first win in the PDRA in a long time there at the East Coast Nationals. So, y'all got home, you're able to celebrate. It's sinking in. How did it feel to win again at the PDRA? Oh, it's always awesome to win at PDRA. Um, I mean... There's not been a lot of times that we've been able to celebrate at the racetrack, and we, we made the decision to stay one more night and pack up slowly and take our time getting home and just be rested for the work week because we definitely had a lot of work to do in between that race and this race, not only on our car, but customers' cars and stuff like that. Um, we also took my son Evan, and he went and raced his snowmobile for the first time last weekend at Lancaster, so that was really cool. And Lucas is racing tonight, and he's going to the final of the Quick 8, so good luck, Luke. Awesome. Hey, Lancaster, shout out to you. Hope you'll have a great year. Glad you're open back up for racing there in upstate New York. Lucas, hope you do well. Hope Evan keeps doing well. Uh, Johnny, look, first win in Pro Stock Extreme last time out. What does it feel like to step up from Outlaw 632 and do it in a mountain motor? It's great. I mean, uh, this has been my... My, my goal where, where I want to be. Um, I'm a naturally aspirated clutch guy, so um, I, I, it's the fastest naturally aspirated cars on the, on the planet, and uh, they're a whole lot of fun to drive. So um, 632 was was a awesome experience, especially winning two championships. Got a lot of low qualifiers, and uh, I learned a lot, and, and a lot of national event wins, so that was great, but uh, again, I wanted to get where I'm at now and, and start uh, winning some trophies. Last year, I did jump in the car, ran some NHRA races, some PDRA races, but this is my full season, and uh, we're chasing a championship now. Chasing that championship. Folks, look, here at Between the Slicks, be sure to chime in, drop a few questions. We'd love to put them to our drivers tonight. If you've got any 
We also are going to do some things, have, try to have some fun things on this show in the future. We're going to put these drivers to the test with a little bit of motorsports trivia right now. It's not on, just... I was unaware of it's, this. It's not just drag racing. <laughs> I didn't Can study. I have Evan come in? Can yeah, Evan come in? No, no. I didn't so study. It's not just drag racing. We're, we're going to have several questions throughout motorsports because you know Monday Morning Racer is about more than just drag racing, though I love drag racing. All right, drivers. So... Who is known as the father of the fours in drag racing? Father of the fours? Father of the fours. Obscure nickname for this guy. Can you give us some hints? Okay. Are uh, we too young for this question? <laughs> <laughs> too young for this question. Well, I'm, I'm 31 and I know this. You can't be too young. All right. So, so his nickname elsewhere, if you put it together with the rest of his name, The Thrill. Eddie Hill. Eddie Hill. Bingo. Eddie Hill. Very good job. I'm done. I'm, I'm, leaving. I'm out. <laughs> I got one. I'm done. All right. All right. Next question. What driver is the latest NASCAR Cup winner? I'll Who never know. Nights? I'll never know. Not a ne They'll never know. They'll never <laughs> know. Uh, Jim might know. Jim might know. <laughs> yeah. All right. He's recently in NASCAR Jimmy. So, so that would be Martin Truex Jr. He won Wednesday night. All right, guys. Let's uh, continue through this. Uh, hopefully, these drag racers have got uh, a little bit more motorsports knowledge. <laughs> who is known? Who is known as the king in the world of outlaw sprint car racing? Oh man! Oh, we wow. got to keep this. Wow, hard. Randy, give it, give it to me. I, I'm going to say Steve Kinzer. Steve Kinzer, <laughs> yes, Steve Kinzer, Steve Kinzer. Can we skip to the drag racing? Yes, can we skip to the drag racing ones? Yes, yes. Okay, here's a drag racing one. This is this is a drag racing one. Modern, it's modern too. Ha didn't happen that long ago. Who is the latest pro stock winner in NHRA? NHRA race or race? The, so this like, would be Phoenix. I know who won Orlando. Yeah. I, Does Orlando count as the NHRA? I tell you what, I, it's, I'll give you Orlando. Who, okay, who was Jeggy. Jeggy won Orlando. Yes, Jeggy won in Orlando. Now, the last NHRA event in Phoenix, that would be Erica. I was going to say Erica. You were there. there. Lee Craft, I, Money I, I was Racer, there. he was there I was on there. the scene. I was there on the scene, And Pomona, yes. Pomona was Jeggy, too, right? Uh, yes, Pomona was I know, Jeggy. I know Elite swept the yes, first. Yes, Elite, so. Elite has swept the first. They've been running very, very well. All right, here's another drag racing one. What track is known as Thunder Valley in Drive? Bristol. 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 Very good. Very good. Hey, that's not fair. Johnny Pacino was there last year at the Mount Motor uh, Strutmasters.com machine, and uh, it didn't take him long to figure it out, man. He looked really good out there. Definitely. 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 Hey, at least you, uh, you all as drivers, when you go there now, you don't have to deal with the curved shutoff area. No, but you have to deal now. with a lot of bumps, so that's another yes, thing. Yes. <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, Another drag racing question, and you watching, feel free to chime in. Who was the first to 200 miles per hour in a door car? Door car. That's a good one, Lee. I should know this. <laughs> yes, y'all are in door cars. They should know. <laughs> uh, uh, is Scotty Quinn? Nope, no, not Scotty. Quinn Stott? Nope, not Quinn. Why do I think this? He might be the first to get a gasser to 200. When <laughs> gassers, though. First name is Bill. Bill? Bill, Bill Coleman? Bill Coleman, yes. Bill, Bill Coleman, first two, 200 miles per hour in a door car. All right, well, here's the last one, and I will move on from <laughs> trivia tonight. We the last one. Do this. <laughs> How many times down the quarter mile does it take to complete a full mile? Four. 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 Good. They got that one. Four. I was he like, really, that's a trick question. Yes, that's a trick question. He really dumbed that one down for yes, us. Yes, <laughs> All right. And these PDR, PDRA racers got it. They're used to going to 660, but <laughs> they, uh, uh, they, they got that. So, yes, four times down the quarter mile to a full mile. All right, look, Johnny, you mentioned something to me that uh, I want you to answer it. Then, Melanie, I want you to answer it from being in Pro Boost. You mentioned coming to Darlington that it messes with you a little bit with timing. So explain that. So they have a different timing system here. It's, I think it's ActiTime versus CompuLink. Um, and I pride myself on reaction time. Uh, so when I'm at Galat, Virginia, somewhere else, uh, I'm, you know, if I, if I set the car up in myself and I'm 020, 030, I come here, I'm 300s quicker all day long. And it's tough. You know, last year I was chasing a 632 championship and I came out here with a 008 red. In 632 first round so uh you gotta you gotta fight that now guys who are a little sleepy 
uh, they're 60, 70 somewhere else, they pick up here, they're 30, they're heroes, you know, so um, I, I feel like I lose an advantage over someone who's not as up on the, on the start line as, um, as, as, uh, as others, so you try and fight that, we came here for the first run, I slowed the clutch linkage down, that's, that's really what we have, we don't have to lay boxes, we don't have anything like that, so you can't tell a driver to slow down, you have to, when you see, when you see Amber, you got to go. Um, so I, I slow my clutch linkage down, what it does is make the pedal longer. Um, so I did that for the first run, I was triple O. Say um, that again? Yeah, that was triple O, so... <laughs> don't get much better than that. Yeah, well, I, I don't want to be triple O, I'm not going to lie to you, because all that means is I'm going to be double O one first round, so double O one red. Uh, so, again, we slowed it down for the next run, I was 0-13, but again, I'd rather be in that 20 range, because first round comes, you're pumped up, and I don't want to go red, I want to give myself a chance. Um, I'd rather live in that old 20 range. So it's, it's a little bit tougher. Uh, for some reason, the Saki time system is just a thorn in my side, but uh, hopefully tomorrow changes. Awesome. Melanie, similar issue, or does it not phase you all in Pro Boost, or, or is it a, you know, a particular <clears throat> driver issue? Well, they allow delay boxes in Pro Boost, which my team is definitely against. <laughs> um, I do not have a delay box in my car. I like to be... 10 to 20 on the tree and usually fairly decent at that. Um, I was 14 this morning, then 28, and then 025 red. <laughs> so we'll, uh, we have some adjustments we can make. Um, all the other cars have delay boxes. I, I think I'm probably one of the only cars that doesn't have a delay box and um, maybe that will be good for me, maybe it will be bad for me, I don't know. Um, I try not to worry about what happened in the last run, I just worry about what's going to happen in the next run and take it as it comes. So we'll make some, we'll make some adjustments, but um, if, I mean, in Pro Boost, if you're not in the teens, you're not good enough. So um, it's not like you can be, I mean, before you used to be able to be 30s, 40s, and those were good lights, not now. You got to be on your game, and it's it's hard to adjust as a driver just because you got it in your head. You know this timing system's quick, and but just try not to think about it. <laughs> just try not to think about it. Yeah. Do your thing. Do your thing, and make adjustments on the car to just to slow it down a little bit. Awesome, awesome. We we've got uh, we got a couple of folks chiming in here. Bill, Billy Lawrence, who's driving a little, little pickup truck here at Darlington, want to say that you guys are looking good. Thank you, Bailey. Uh, <laughs> we're very sweaty. Good, good look, we don't smell good. good. <laughs> we look okay, but. And uh, we just want to encourage the fans that are watching to uh, send in some questions. We'll keep an eye on that, and we'll throw the questions to Melody and, and Johnny. Yes, please send, send, send in questions. those questions. Send in those questions. Uh, now, I've noticed being here at the PDRA and you all talking about the lights and that you don't have any room to spare anymore. It seems like with eighth mile drag racing, you know, it, it seems to almost be an equalizer with those who have a ton of horsepower because you can't come around on the top end. If you're late on the light, you probably lost it because you just can't catch up as you could in the quarter mile or even the thousand foot. So do y'all feel running 660 that it puts it back into the driver's hands a little bit? Absolutely, and especially in my position right now. I mean, our car's not running very fast. I mean, it it's still fast, but we... We need to work on some things and work on our tune-up and get things right and get back to, to where we need to be. Um, so my guys kind of are relying on me right now. And luckily at Galat, they relied on me. I relied on them. And it all worked. So it, it was better to be lucky than good at that race, I think. <laughs> definitely, definitely. You feel like it puts it back in the driver's hand, Johnny? Yeah, 100%. I mean, you don't have the other 660 feet to drive around somebody so uh, I, I enjoy it I, I love I love going quarter mile just because uh, you know 225 mile an hour you know it was better than that but uh, again when we were an under budgeted team for a long time um, really had an opportunity to go to go eighth mile racing and, and kind of turn on some wind lights when um, we really probably were under horsepower and things like that we're not at this point luckily uh, we're, we're able to have really good horsepower from John Cozzi racing engines thanks to partners like Strutmasters uh, dot com. So um, we're, we're in good shape now. I'm, I'm ready to go quarter mile racing because we got some really good speed on this thing. But uh, again, uh, I, I, if it's a driver's race, I'd love to be uh, in that all day long. Cool, man. All right, guys. For you fans that don't know, 
these two drivers have got some interesting names connected to their car or cars. Uh, this lady right here has got Purple Rain, or I, I always like to do Purple Rain, you know, even though it's not spelled like the Prince song. So Purple Rain, also Side Piece, that's the radio car. Mm -hmm. And Johnny over here, the engine, I love that, but I love yeah, that. the engine is named Vito. All right, yeah. all right. So and we uh, have our engines named too. Oh, the one in the car, I think, is Buster. Buster. Yeah, Buster. Buster. Yeah, and the the one that we ran at Galat is uh, Big V. Big V. My grandmother's name was Vera, so we named it after her. Named she, after she grandma. Was, she actually um, raced uh, stock cars in the like. Powder puff class okay, back okay, okay. a long, long time yeah, ago in yeah. Toronto. So she Very cool. uh, she watches over us and well, she got that's been a win. really good engine. Yeah, she got <laughs> you the win. Big V got you the win a lot. A lot. That's awesome. Uh, look, Johnny, clue folks in on uh, Vito and some of the other engines and how you're getting the inspiration and naming these characters of mountain motors. Yeah, so we we put uh, some guys number their engines, but uh, if we numbered ours, we'd only have a number one on them all. So um, we. Uh, <laughs> We, we have Vito right now. We built the, the mountain motor engine at the same time as we were putting together our 632 engine. And um, we named it after my cousin Vinny, uh, Mona Lisa Vito, and Vincent LaGuardia Gambini. So the, uh, the 632 engine was called Gambini, and, and this one was called Vito. So um, it kind of came from our engine builder. He always jokes around with us with, um, about the, the uh, Italian stuff. And he, we, we all uh, like my cousin Vinny quite a bit. So that all came from that. And... Uh, I don't know. I, I like Vito right now. <laughs> he likes Vito, and Vito's running well. It already got him a win, and he's qualified fourth. Fourth, right? Again? Fourth. Yeah, qualified now, fourth. What so I want to well. hear, Lee, is I want to hear an explanation of the side piece nickname. Can you explain <laughs> that one? Okay, well, <clears throat> we've been racing the Firebird for, this is a sixth year now. So, um, the end of last year, we were building uh, the radial car for Eddie Whalen. I was gonna drive it and we had to come up with a name because the Purple Rain name has kind of like just blown up and everybody refers to the car as Purple Rain and purple happens to be my favorite color. Sometimes there's a little TMP in the pit which means too much purple, but it's okay. <laughs> and uh, so we, we were thinking, you know, like what else could we call it that has to do with Purple Rain? So. Well, it's Purple Rain's side piece because the Pro Mod car kind of was like our first deal, and then the radial car was something to do on the side. <laughs> <laughs> something explanatory there. Yeah, something to do on the side. Which but has also become like just as important as the Pro Mod car. So it, but everybody now knows that that car is side piece. So it. It worked. Yeah, it worked. <laughs> it worked. And not only has it worked, but it's worked and y'all been successful in it. Like, yeah. what, at least one win in the radio car? Yeah, one win, and I haven't uh, been put out before the semifinals in any race, so. Wow, yeah, yep. doing well. Doing well. Definitely doing well in that car. All right, guys, so talk to me. When you look out at your field of competitors, when you line up against this particular guy or gal, who causes you to be a bit nervous? Or are you the ones causing everybody else to be a bit nervous? So Johnny, who out there right now is uh, the one like, man, this, this, this is a tough cat. Is it, is it Machine Gun Monty over there or is it someone else? Well, I got Machine Gun Monty first round. I, 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 we had to come up with Machine Gun Monty anyway. I want to know. I need an explanation on that. Um, but uh, I, uh, man, I'm not going to lie to you. I, I'm really not nervous racing anybody. I have a lot of confidence in, in what we do over here. Um, there's guys that I want to beat more than others, um, but... I can't say I'm nervous against running. I have a lot of respect for a lot of people. They've, they've raced Mountain Motor Pro Stock for a long time. Uh, I think John Monicavo has probably made the most runs in, in a Mountain Motor Pro Stock car over anybody. Um, so, again, running him, we're, we're really good friends. I have a ton of respect for him, but uh, I'm, not, I'm not scared of running him. Um, who I want to beat the most? Probably Chris Powers. He just runs his mouth way too much. Uh, so I <laughs> would love to kick his you-know-what. Um, but this JR car is running really good, so there, there's a lot of there's a lot of good good racers out there. Uh, I want to beat them all. We're not nervous racing any of them. We feel like we can uh, beat all of them. Um, again, ton of respect for him as well. 
Yes, I just don't see that from Chris at all whatsoever. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. There's one word that just summarizes what he just said. Forget about it. <laughs> Forget about it. Yes, yes. Melanie, you, that competitor, or are you the one out there on the track? I don't know. <laughs> You'd have to ask everybody else, I guess. <laughs> um, I don't have anybody that makes me nervous. This is what I do. This is my job. This is my life. This is me. So if I was to get nervous about racing somebody, I think um, probably wouldn't be right for the job. <laughs> I want to know who you want to beat the most. Come on, spill it. I spilled it. Everybody already knows. Everybody. Everybody. <laughs> She's politically <laughs> cracks. <and> Kevin. <laughs> there it is. Uh, no, honestly, I, I, we have a very good friendship, and I'm happy for him when he wins, and he's happy for me when I win. But, um, no, it, I want to beat everybody. That's plain and simple. When I come here, I want to beat everybody. So um, that's my, my main goal every time we come here. Whether we qualify number one, number three, number ten, number sixteen, um, you can win from any spot, and I feel like that's kind of what we need to do tomorrow. <laughs> well, guys, look, twenty twenty has been a challenging year with COVID nineteen, the pandemic. Uh, how challenging has it been from a business standpoint, a driver standpoint, a racing standpoint? You know. Uh, Johnny, if you don't know, he's in the insurance world, and uh, Melanie, uh, she's connected with the race shop back home, and you know, so how how tough has it been business and racing with COVID nineteen? Go ahead, Johnny. Well, um, we we kind of just went re uh, remotely. Um, my my business was uh, not too much affected. Uh, things had to change. I manage a uh, group of, of auto claims adjusters, so. Um, we just had to make a few changes. Again, claim count went down because uh, driving went down. So, um, but again, people are still paying their premiums and uh, it didn't necessarily affect us all that much. We just had to change and adapt with the situation like everybody else did. Um, maybe it's a little bit different for, you know, racing engine builders and things like that because racing wasn't going on for a while. So that definitely could affect it. As far as racing goes, I was just eager to get out here, man. I, I just wanted to go racing so bad. Uh, again, we, we understand that there was a, a, a big reason why we weren't, and, and I get that. So you have to put everything into perspective. Um, you know, I have a 66-year-old father where you want him to be healthy and safe as well. Uh, so do I want my mom and everybody else that's around. So um, you understand that, and you try to do the best we can. I, I live in you know downstate New York, so um, we probably got hit worse than anybody else yeah. did with it. And we saw a little bit different side of it than um, a lot of other areas. Um, so... Again, when we come out and we, and we go, we go places uh, down south or wherever else. You know, it it, it is definitely a, a different vibe. Uh, but again, I just, I just, you want, you come out here, and you just want to get back to normalcy a little bit and, and kind of see a lot of people and, and things like that. So it was, it was a long uh, off season, but uh, I'm just, I'm just happy to be back. Cool. G Force, did it slow down? Did y'all were y'all able to get projects out of the way that had been sitting back in the corner for two years? You know, how, how was it? <clears throat> Honestly. It I was more concerned about John because John goes to the racetrack to make money and his job is more like hands-on at the racetrack so not having any races scheduled and not knowing when we could go back to the racetrack or when he could even go testing with customers that that really was kind of something that played a, a toll on us but um, luckily we were able to go to Florida with the side piece and <laughs> living in New York. Don't on it. tell purple rain. <laughs> <laughs> living in New York, upstate New York or western New York, I guess it is. We felt all of the repercussions from the city and it's, it's totally different. Like going home and then coming to the racetrack in the south, it's like night and day different. I mean... You can't go into a store. You can't do anything without wearing your face covering. And I mean, it. It. They definitely took it serious, and it was definitely something that they needed to do. I think, but um, it. It was a little bit scary at times. <laughs> definitely, definitely. I was shocked because you know I was up there in Hamlin, outside of Rochester, New York, and I moved about a month ago from Rochester back to South Carolina and North Carolina and 
I step into South Carolina, I'm like, did y'all shut down? Yeah. What's, what's going on? <laughs> yeah. You know, so, yeah, <clears throat> it's definitely a shocker from the southeast to the northeast. Randy, so, we got someone so to So what I'm trying to say, Lee, is the Waffle House was closed in Rockingham. <laughs> Well, it was yeah. closed in Benson. Right, 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 um, right. We want to give a few folks a shout out that are that are listening. Uh, Waylon Hodges, hey Waylon. Uh, Tracy Rudder, hi Tracy. Uh, Les Epperson, Tim Gottschall, James Wyatt, Carolyn Gregory, uh, Timothy Nifong, Bill Jarrett, uh, James Hall, sharing it. Buddy Warden, sharing it. Thank David you. Sparks, uh, hi David. Uh, Rebecca Crawford, John Birdie. Hey everybody, appreciate you watching. Thank you. You're guys. watching Monday Morning Racer with Lee Craft, and we you got two special guests here who are out here competing uh, this weekend in the PDR PDRA at Darlington Dragway. Who we got here? Again, Melanie Salemi in Pro Boost, and also Johnny Placino. Hey, with with your last name, how bad do people butcher it? Am I even getting it right? Oh I no, mean, you say it correct. I get it right. Okay. The only I, thing that. How many times do people salami? say salami? Yes, salami. Right. Yes. <laughs> when they can't read. <laughs> <laughs> and then some people think it's funny, and I'm like, oh, never heard that before. <laughs> never heard that before. Right, right. <laughs> well, yeah, I had a quick follow-up question with, with Johnny Quachino. Johnny, being from New York, I'm from North Carolina, and Lee and I are both working in a little small town in North Carolina. Things are starting to kind of get back going again. Uh, I, I announced races at, at two uh, oval tracks, stock racing tracks, one of which is closed in my hometown of Winston-Salem, Bowman Gray Stadium, one of the most famous tracks in the country, the Bad House TV show and all that. But the lesser known track, Ace Speedway, which is a little bit north of Burlington, North Carolina, has been all over the news. Uh, the governor of North Carolina intervened, shut the speedway down. That's why I'm down here and not back, back home. So my follow-up question is, up there in New York where it's been so tough, uh, you know, how are things starting to open back up, and how, how's the world looking, and are, are some of the racetracks in that area showing any signs of life? I don't, have a, ra no I don't have a racetrack <laughs> he doesn't, yeah. anywhere yeah. near me, man. It's, it's depressing. Uh, there's not a racetrack two and a half hours from me is the closest thing, and yeah. that's that's deep into New Jersey. In two and a half hours, you're doing pretty good getting there that quick. So Would that be Atco? That'd be Atco. Atco, so, yeah. Gotcha. Again, we have no no racetracks by us. But as far as just regular life opening up, um, I think Wednesday, yeah, the day after we left to come here, they opened up restaurants for outdoor uh, seating with, with tons and tons of rules. So um, we are slow to reopen. Um, I mean, I guess they did their job. They flattened the curve. They, uh, you know, the spike went down, and uh, we're, we're going to reopen slowly. So... Um, I'm going to tell you, I missed going to a restaurant so bad. I got um, to go to a restaurant last week for the first time, went tw twice in one day. <laughs> yes, yes, it's a special feeling. It's a special <laughs> feeling. What about in your, in your neck of the woods? What's, what's going on there? Um, well, racetracks are open, open no yeah, spectators. Yeah, yeah. and Lancaster! Yes, Lancaster. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, we actually got to do a uh, secret COVID race. Yes, we did. Yes, yes, we did. I got to host the uh, COVID, uh, no, the quarantine, quarantine with the Caruso's COVID-19, COVID COVID, COVID Cup. I, yeah. I, I, I termed it the COVID Cup. Yeah. Yes, it was so good. That, uh, Melanie and some other drivers were in their regular streetcars uh, going down Lancaster Drive. Believe it or not, yeah. my tuner didn't do his job, and I lost. <laughs> it's always the tuner. Always the tuner. And Lee, I'll let you have it back in a second. We want to give a quick shout out to some other folks watching. Uh, Missy May Miller Taylor. Thank you, Missy. Ashley Alderman. Thank you, uh, Ashley. Rachel Henderson. Woodrow Walker. Uh, Shane Knight. Sarah Folt. Darren Young. Thank you, guys. Randy Disher. Uh, Keith Shields. Frankie Maris. Tim Hudson. Homer Williams Jr. Uh, Taylor Ingram. Appreciate you guys watching. Yes, yes. You're watching uh, Monday Morning Racer. We're here at Darlington Dragway. And Lee, back to you. Thank you. So, speaking of dragways, uh, Melanie, look, give us an update. Empire has been at work yes. there south of Rochester. What have they done to that track? Oh, man, they have done everything. They put in concrete walls. They made everything look beautiful. They did lots of paving, um, updated so many things, and I cannot wait to go there. We're going to actually have a Pro Mod race there July 25th. And hopefully by that time we're able to have spectators. Um, if not, maybe it'll be live streamed. I don't know. But um, prior to that, we are going to go there and we're going to test and test and test and test and test because it's only an hour away from our house. And mm -hmm. that track is amazing. Yeah. The surface is amazing. And we went there last year. I actually hold the record there 360 
360, yeah, it's a good number. It's a good number there. Maybe, maybe 365. Anyways, um, I should probably know that. <laughs> Evan knows. Hey, she knows she holds the record. She's record <laughs> I know number. I hold the record. If I need to know numbers, I just ask Evan because he retains everything. Um, yeah, so we're going to go there. We'll test. And the track surface there is awesome. The only thing that was a little bit nerve-wracking was the, the guardrails there, but mm -hmm. those are now gone, so it is going to be awesome. Yes, Empire Dragway, guys, y'all have done a great job yes, during this uh, pandemic. The track looks great. I'm hoping I can get there July 25th for the Pro Mod event. Also, I think Nitro Funny Cards are going to be there and, and Top Dragster again, yeah, which is a tricks. great card, great card for drag racing. All right, guys, look, I'm going to wind this up. i got one more question for these guys because I interrupted Melanie from eating, and I want her to get back to that. I want to eat something, and I'm sure Johnny does too. So my last question for you drivers, the PDRA, when you look at the schedule, it's Eastern Seaboard. Is there any desire, and then beyond desire, what will it take to go to the uh, central part of the nation and to the West Coast? Well, they've done that, and I know our team will travel wherever we need to go, so that, that's, no, that's no issue for us. Um, I mean, when you say racetrack, we're, we're going. Um, I think a lot of people that race in this organization like to stay on the eastern side of the country and don't want to travel so much. I mean, we travel even to come here. It's at least 12 to 14 hours, depending on traffic, and it's, it's far for us to go anywhere. We were really excited to go to Norwalk because <laughs> it was only four hours. Unfortunately, that's not going to happen. So, um... We'll go anywhere. It doesn't matter. As long as we get to be with the PDRA crew, we'll travel. So. She's game no matter what. Johnny, what would it take for the Pacinos to go west? Well, we've, we've done it. Like I said, if we're racing for a championship, we have to go where the schedule is. Um, we're in New York also, so there's the <laughs> schedule is not friendly to us. But, uh, again, like she said, they, they've tried it. They've gone out to Tulsa and some other places and didn't have Dallas. the type of car counts that they have when they stay east. So, um I guess I guess after a little bit of testing of of different facilities, they they decided that East is point. Um, there are some some Midwest Pro Mod series and things like that, but uh, um, I think as far as the Pro Mod racers go, PDRA is uh, and, and the Pro Stock racers and everybody else, the PDRA is definitely the top um, as far as competition goes. So hey, maybe at some point the Midwest versus the PDRA should have some some sort of uh, runoff and. That'd be pretty cool, right? That would be pretty cool. A Midwest Pro Mod versus PDRA. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like your thinking, man. I like your thinking. I still want, though, I want a match race between him and his dad. Someone needs to get another <laughs> car out here, and it needs to happen. That needs to happen. What you got, Randy? Well, I just wanted to uh, ask Melanie a question. Um, you know, I, I come from the stock car racing world, and, and that, that world has been very slow to have women reach the top level. I think NHRA and drag racing in general has done a much better job of, of promoting female and minority racers. Your, your thought on, you know, signing the autographs for the, for the teen, teen girls, young girls, you know, and, and the future growth of the sport in that area? Um, I mean, I, I want every girl to be able to race. Um, struggling right now, our, our daughter doesn't want to race anymore, which you know what, that's fine. She wants to dance, and maybe someday she'll, she'll get back, <laughs> back into it, but she's here um, supporting this weekend, and she, uh, she brought her, her mats so that she can do her flips, and she's happy doing that, which is cool. Um, just happy that she's, she's with us for the weekend. Um, I, I encourage any female, any male, to pursue whatever they want. I mean... If you if you want to go drag racing and you have the heart to, to do it, the door is open for anybody to do it. So just keep on straight and narrow. And I mean, it, it's one of the best things that ever happened in my life is that my dad bought me a junior dragster. I mean, it, it's 100%. one of the most like. And, and Melanie, you hit on something that Lee, Lee I wanted to ask. Johnny about 
this being the eve of Father's Day weekend and how cool it is to be spending uh, this weekend with your dad. Uh, you know, I watched you two earlier today, and you guys were just thrashing and and in the heat of battle trying to get that get that car ready for. You made a lot of changes to it, which worked. You had a much better qualifying effort, but it was so much fun watching you two go back and forth as a as a father and son. And, and as a dad, I love doing stuff with my kids. Talk about that a little bit. It's Father's Day weekend. How, how much drag racing is that family sport? Well, thank you for reminding me. I have to give my dad a Father's Day gift. Um, <laughs> it's next that. weekend, I think. Oh, uh, shoot. Good. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> We've so, got a little time. <laughs> I will say this, though. The banter between Johnny and John is hilarious. <laughs> if you want to come to the PDRA and have a show, don't watch the drag racing. It is a show. Go to their pits and follow them. I'll second that. <laughs> yeah, it's great. We have a great relationship. Uh, we're, we're both pretty similar, so that makes it difficult at times. Uh, we both think we're right, and, um, you know, it, it is what it is. We both, we both tune the car, so uh, when, when that's the case, you know, you're not always going to agree on what you want to do. Um, sometimes we'll go my way, sometimes we'll go his way, sometimes we'll compromise, sometimes we agree. Uh, but again, it, you know, I've, I've learned a ton from my father. I'm only standing here because of him, so a uh, ton and ton of respect. He's my hero, my idol, so um, at the end of the day, if that match race does happen, I hate the car. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got to get it worked out. we got to get it worked out. Best two out of three for Johnny and, and John Pacino. That would be great. That would be great. Well, guys, look, this has been the first installment of Between the Slicks with the Monday Morning Racer. I plan on doing this at every drag race I go to. If it's NHRA, PDRA, ADRL, or some other acronym that I have no clue that's out there and they're racing, <laughs> I plan on bringing you the stars of that particular sanctioning body and bringing news from the track. So, to Melanie, it's not Salami Salimi, and to Johnny, wise guy, well, Chino, all of this brought to you by strutmasters.com. Until next time, God bless and keep the pedal to the metal.